and I told you from time to time, I like to talk about this subject. And in this message, I'm going to get to why I like to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about praying for the sick. sick. When I talk about praying for the sick, I am talking about more than just reciting a prayer that you really don't believe and hoping something positive will happen. But I am talking about praying the prayer of faith so that the miracle of healing mm -hmm. will take place or a process of healing will begin to reveal itself in the wound that was prayed for because heal the sick is the will of God. Notice I use the term miracle, and I also use the term process. Every time someone is prayed for, they don't always receive a miracle. Sometimes by simply making a command, or making contact by laying hands on the sick, a process of healing will take place. And see, a lot of times, the candidate, one that has been prayed for, they want to always put it on the person that's praying. Amen. Come on. But a lot of times it's on the person also Amen. that's being prayed for. Where is your faith? Amen. Amen. The preacher is faithful enough to take time to pray. That's right. You ought to be faithful enough to stand. And when you have done all you can do to stand, yes. stand. Right. I did receive a miracle. A miracle is not guaranteed to you. Amen. But miracles are set in the Bible. Amen. And so, if I didn't receive a miracle, perhaps I received the process of healing and it has revealed itself and over a period of time my body will be made whole. Amen. Are you listening to me? Now when we Notice the ministry of Jesus Christ. That was three things that Jesus did religiously. Jesus, he preached, he taught, and he healed. In other words, Jesus demonstrated that what he was preaching and that what he was teaching. Because healing is the will of God. Now, you remember in Matthew the 8th chapter, there was a leper that came to Jesus and said, Master, if it is your will, I can be made whole. And Jesus said, it is my will for you to be healed. So Jesus didn't give a command. But the Bible said that, and Jesus laid his hands upon him and the man received a healing. Have you notice also in the ministry of Jesus that he would always have the people to do something. Now, when I pray for someone, perhaps they may have a backache, they may have, you know, arthritis, and they, they, they might be something that I want them to do just to show that they have faith, that they have been prayed for. See, a lot of times, when you pray for the sick, the very first thing that comes out of our mouth is, I hope I receive something. Mm -hmm. Wrong choice of words. Mm -hmm. This is why when I pray for the sick, I, if they have a bad problem, I will have them to bend over and move just to show faith, to show that they believe that they have been prayed for and a healing process will begin to take place in that back. Now, I love miracles just as much as anybody. I love to see someone pray for they fall out and get up and they are totally and completely made whole. But what if, if it doesn't happen that way? What if, what if it doesn't happen that way? Are you going to say the right thing? Are you going to stand in your ground? I am a living witness that praying for the sick is the will of God. I am a living witness that God is still healing people. But 
Most of the churches don't take the time. I get to that in just, just a little bit here. Can I take my time, y'all? Yes. Now, it is the will of God for the church to pray for the sick. Because healing the sick is an extension of the Father's love to his children. Healing is an extension of God's love to his children. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever so believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So when you enter the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. there are many promises mm -hmm. that God has made you, according to his word. You did not get saved until you initiated the promise of salvation. That was you confess with your mouth, you believe in your heart, and you were saved. Mm -hmm. But there were some more promises that are there. Healing is one of those promises. And just like you didn't run to God to get saved, a lot of times people will pray for someone and they don't get healed, but that does not negate the fact that God has stopped the healing process. Amen. Are you listening to me? And so when Jesus gave a great commission, he said the Great Commission, Go ye therefore in all the world and preach the gospel. That was an authorization that Jesus was given to, was given to the church. Go ye therefore in all the world and preach the gospel. Well, I, I like to say that when we read that, we limit it to the mountaintop experience. When Jesus was just talking to those that were in his presence, we limit it to Jesus just talking to those people that was there when he made that great commission. But really, Jesus was prophesying and saying that when I leave the church, the New Testament church, is going to come into existence. So not only am I speaking to those that are in front of me, but if that I am speaking to them also, that shall come to know me as their Lord. So Jesus authorized the church to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And he also said in that same commission, these signs shall follow. Them that believe in my name, they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them, and they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. That is the word of God. Now, let me ask you a question. A church is, local church is still in existence today. So that means that we are keeping that aspect and that part of the Great Commission. But what about when it comes to laying hands on the sick and, and commanding that bodies be made whole? You see, a lot of times when you do it once and nothing happens, we give up, we quit, and say, well, you know, nothing happened, what have you. So we get away from that, but seem not to be easy. How many people are ready to run into the church to get saved? Hmm? You talk to people, and they look at you like you're crazy when you ask them to come to your church or what have you. So what make people think that once they're prayed for, they automatically go and get healed or whatever. But again, it's still now. It is the will of God. He said, these signs shall follow. And you still on that mountain just when he said that. When he was talking to those apostles. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall, and certain signs will follow. Okay? But what if now? What if? I'm not doing any of that. I'm not going to get any results. But yet and still, I will be quick to say that God don't heal anymore. And my question to you is, when the last time you stood for healing for yourself? Amen. When the last time have you actually prayed for somebody to get healed? Amen. Fathers in their household ought to be praying for their children. Amen. 
You don't plan a day ahead of time not to come to church. You ought to be praying for your family Amen. and praying for others. Amen. So a lot of times, see, when it's, it, it, it sounds good when it's coming from the pool of it for me. See, because a lot of people say, well, Pastor Reese, have exercise, but he's a preacher. He, he, he knows that God will heal or whatever. I know it, and I'm sharing my testimony with you, but when these things happen, we get afraid and we go right into the medicine camp. Yes. Hmm? Yes. My knees have bothered me so sometimes. There are a lot of things that, that bother me and whatever, but I always give God mm -hmm. the first opportunity. Yeah. And now I'm not, I'm not teaching a message and telling the person not to go to a doctor. I wouldn't do that. See, there was there were, there were a need for Dr. Man. You know, I'm glad God gave them. Amen. Because if there wasn't a doctor, then a lot of Christian folk would be dead. Mm -hmm. I'm glad, you know, for surgery. I'm glad for medication and all of that. I'm glad, but I'm also glad that we have a God that we can go to, especially when the doctor has given us a death sentence. Amen. In other words, that could come to your body or you could contract a disease where there is no medical cure found on the earth. Amen. So what are you going to do? Are you going to plan your funeral? Are you going to say, well, there is nothing that can do? But I thought you said that you were in church. Amen. I thought you said that there was promises. I thought you said that God had benefits for the church and what have you. So why don't you give God the opportunity? And I'm talking about more than just reciting a prayer full of unbelief, hoping that right, something right. happens. Amen. I'm talking about praying a prayer of faith so that mm -hmm. a miracle or a healing process will begin to reveal itself in your physical body. Amen. In other words, my back mm -hmm. don't hurt as much as it did yesterday. Amen. In other words, I can move my fingers a lot better than I could yesterday. See, what happened is, the process has started, you got to stick with it until it, the complete Amen. change Amen. come. Amen. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. And so, he said, these signs shall follow. Now, talking to the church now, talking to us. This is why we come to church to learn Amen. this. Yes, Not to be totally dependent upon the preacher, but the preacher preaches this to you or teach it to you so that you can go out and share it with somebody else. Did you not know that God can use healing as a witness that he is king, Amen. king of kings, the Lord of lords? God can use the, the benefit of healing mm -hmm. to show a person that don't know anything about him that God is king. Mm -hmm. The doctors have given that person a bad prognosis. But here comes the believer and they declare or decree a word over that person, lay hands on him, and then a healing process begins to take place and that person will have to testify that this person, God, is real. Now also, Jesus, and when I, when I quote this, this verse here, I like to say that it was a very interesting statement because it is when you look at it. When Jesus was in the upper room the night before he was going to be crucified, he made this statement to his disciples. He told them, Verily, verily, I said, you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, you shall do also, and great works of these shall you do, because I go to my Father. Now, what was significant about Jesus going to his Father? Notice he said that the works that I do, you're going to do also. But greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. What was significant about Jesus going to his Father? See, first of all, Jesus had to go to the Father to receive power, the same power that God invested in him. So he had to go to the Father to receive power in order to give it to the church. Amen. Now, if you can remember, when Jesus got baptized, the Holy Ghost came upon him, didn't it? And the Father confirmed by speaking, this is my son, in whom I am well pleased, hear him or hear what he has to say. And so, now, when Jesus went to the Father, it wasn't very long before the Holy Ghost came. And everybody that believes in the Father receives the Holy Ghost. But one thing about Jesus and us, 
The Bible said that Jesus received the Holy Ghost without measure. But you and I, we receive a measure of the Holy Ghost. But now he said that the works that I do, you should do also the greater works than these that you do because I go to my Father. Jesus was actually speaking to his body as a whole. Are you listening to me? The church is the body of Christ. He was speaking not just to the individual, but to the body. He said that I'm, I'm allocating my power to the body so that the work that I did, my body would get also because I went to the Father and I received power from my Father and I turned around and allocated it to the church and I said, go ye that for the work that you see me do, you are going to do also. What did Jesus do? He preached, he taught, and he healed, and he turned around and demonstrated that when he preached and he taught. We don't have time for that on Sunday morning. Hmm? That's going to interrupt our service. Are you listening to folk falling out, man? You know, like, I don't want nobody to stop coming to my church because they got a little weird. They got a little nasty. You know, like they got they got speaking in tongues, and that was some interpretation of tongues, and that was some prophecy. I don't want, you know, like civilized folk coming in here getting upset because we're doing all this stuff. What do you mean? I thought you being a child of God, you're supposed to be different. I didn't say anything about being strange. I said about being I don't want to hang around nobody strange. I just simply want to hang around somebody that don't, that don't get in line with everything everybody else is doing. That means that you are different. Amen. Well, we are going over here, Pastor Reed, where y'all going? Oh. I, I, I'm, I'm not going. See, because when I, when I acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you know, and I start reading this word, it called me to see things in a different light. Because my mind is not the same as it used to be. And so, I look at this thing. I look at this thing, and I'm trying to figure out, you know, like, no, no, I'm not going to go that way. I'm not going to make that statement here. Because somebody could say that would be an arrogant statement, so I'm not going to say it. But the fact of the matter is, he said, go. Go into all the world. Go. He was not just talking about those disciples that were in front of him at the time. You, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, let me, can I quote the verse? He oh, yes. said, all power has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. And go ye therefore and teach our nation, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teach them all, deliver all things whatsoever after command your Lord. I will be with you even to the end of the world. He was not just talking about those people that were in front of him at the time. He was prophesying regarding the work of the church. And it also said over in Mark, the 16th chapter, you know, in these signs of all of them that believe in my name, that was some work that the church was supposed to do. In other words, Jesus was saying, the work that I did, because I had the Holy Ghost without measure, I'm going to go to my Father, I'm going to receive power from my Father, and I'm going to give it to my body so that you can go and complete and do some of the same work that you have seen me do. But the church don't see it because the church don't do it. The church don't see it, the church don't do it, and the church won't see it. You don't do it, you won't see it. You don't do it, you won't see it. Anybody praying with me here? Yes. Now notice, faith healing is a godly promise. But as you have witnessed, None of the promises of God just happened. Let's go back just for a minute. <laughs> the provision of salvation. All of us can find it in John 3, 16. God so loved the world, and he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the provision in words found in John 3, 16. But I want you to notice that that promise just didn't happen in your life. That promise just didn't happen. It's a promise. Whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's a promise. But that promise just didn't happen. In other words, you didn't wake up one morning, oh, oh, Jesus, I think I'm going to go get saved. No, it don't happen that way. Right. Amen. 
It doesn't happen that way. It has to be initiated by the believer. It has to be initiated. You did not come into the kingdom until you. It didn't have to be in the church, inside the church building. It could have been at home in the front room. It could have been out in the park. It could have been standing on the corner. But when you initiated the promise, or you did what was necessary, that promise became a reality in your life. That's why you can remember when you got saved because heaven came to live on the inside of you. And so, faith healing is a godly promise. And many of us can witness and testify to the fact that that godly promise just don't happen. You can hope and wish all you want to. Hold your back and say, oh man, I wish, I wish God would. No, it doesn't happen that way. Amen. Listen to me. If anyone can heal miraculously, I, a healing process begin to reveal itself in your physical body or the one that has been prayed for. If there is a miracle, if there is a healing process that has taken place, it is because somebody has prayed. Amen. Somebody has prayed. And God has honored his promise faithfully because somebody dared to stand on his word. Why do you say you never take advantage of any benefits? Right. Why come into the kingdom of God Amen. and never take advantage of the benefits? All of his promises are yes and amen. There are thousands of promises that God has made. He said, call me. I'll answer. Yes, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find not and the door shall be open, but the church is not asking. They're not seeking, and therefore they're not going to find anything. Amen. Amen. You have to initiate certain promises, all the promises, brother. That's just simply how the kingdom of God operates. Amen. I didn't do anything. I'm not going to get anything. Amen. Wow. I didn't do anything. I'm not going to get anything. God can make the promise, but it's up to the believer to initiate the promise so that it will become a reality in his Amen. Or her life. Amen. Come on. You can read the promise all day. See, but I got to get it from the pages of the Bible into my body. Amen. See, that means that I got to I got to start saying, Lord, I believe your word. Amen. Heavenly Father, you, you sent your words to heal me. Yes. Your words are life unto me. They are health to all of my flesh. Yes. Father, I'm going to stand my ground. Yes. You got to get ugly with this thing. Yes. Can, I, can, I, can I talk to you? Okay. You got to get ugly with it. Yes. The devil got ugly with you. Come Why do you see a pit of pat running around talking about it? Come on. Come on. Come on. He put it on you. God did it. Somebody said, well, I don't know that. But the Bible said that Christ came, you know, that we might have life and life abundant. But, but he also said that the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. Yes, indeed. Wow. Why are you messing around with this thing? Get it right. I mean, Get it right. there is something that a believer should do every day. Give God his props. Amen. Hallelujah. Every day. Yes. Every day. Every day. I'm just going to say this now. Every day. Come on. When I get up in the morning, here's what I do. I'm just going to take you one day. I talk about the blood of Jesus. Lord, thank you for the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus upon my wife. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon me. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon me. I call the head of the household first. Ray, Kim, Malachi, Michael, Matthias. And Lord, I also plead the blood upon the side of our Christian son. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ so that COVID-19 coronavirus will not touch any one of my family members. That's one thing that I do every day. And I also talk about 
walking in the divine self and healing every day of my yes. life. Yes. Do things hurt in my body? Of course they do. See, age will take care of that. I don't feel the same way I did when I was 25. Okay. I would be foolish to say that. Amen. See, because the heart don't even beat the same way. I mean, nothing works the same way. 25, you know, let's fast forward until about 41 years later. Things don't work the same, but I can still talk to God about it. Amen. In other words, I'm standing on his promises. Amen. Where are the promises found, Pastor Reese? They are found in his word. And if I don't take the time Amen. Come on. to read in Proverbs, to read in Ecclesiastes, to read Isaiah, to read Jeremiah, to read Ezekiel, to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, to read Romans, to read Acts, to read 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, to read 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, to read Titus, to read Jude, Jude, to read 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, to read Revelation. The promises are found in the Word. My people are destroyed for the what? The lack of knowledge. You don't know what you can have. It. Come on. Come on. So how people just, just stumble up on salvation? Yes, 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 indeed. <laughs> you know, I can remember during the days of, of Billy Graham crusades and what have you. So a lot of people went to those crusades just because it was Billy Graham. Mm -hmm. So they're not realizing that they were going to go in there and get caught up in the Holy Ghost. Okay. <laughs> and when he gave that altar call, man, the place I mean, the altar just filled up. That wasn't some of those people's intentions. Right. They just got saved because they were in the right place at the right time. See, no, no one really purposely come to a service to get saved. Mm. Wow. See, because first of all, you already think that you're saved. Right. And you won't find out that you were lost until you get saved. Wow. Wow. And once you get saved, it, now it starts, you start looking in the Bible trying to figure out now, I'm saved what belonged to me. Amen. Right. What else belonged to me? What else belong to me as a child of God? And so, godly healing is a promise. Godly, God of faith, healing, healing for the feeling of the body is a promise. Amen. But you have witnessed over a period of time, during the time you say, that it just doesn't happen. I'm talking about some people that you care for, that don't get healed. People that you care for, leave here. And see, what, what I was thinking is that it was all on me. God had to teach me about that. When, when I discovered that God wanted me to carry this mantle, as far as, you know, declaring and decree, healing and laying hands on sick and all of that, I thought it was all on me to get people, you know, to get them made whole. But wow, when I found out the truth, it took a weight off my back. But you know what? It, 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 I had to hurt first. There was this lady that was going to the church that I was going to at the time, and uh, they had sent her home, and she was in hospice. And uh, I was called over there and said, I, I didn't know that it had gotten that bad, but because I talked about it so much at church, people felt that, you know, we would we'll get a hold of Pastor Reese, Pastor Reese could come and pray. And I was glad to go and pray. So I, I went into the room, and then the lady was. And uh, I think her, either her son or nephew or somebody was in the room with me. And I prayed the prayer of faith. I did the best that I could. I prayed the prayer of faith and I left. And when I went to church that next morning, that was on Saturday night, I went to church the next morning. And the first person that I came in contact with was one of the mothers of the church. And she said, she called the lady's name and said she passed during the night. And that, 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 that hurt. That hurt. It hurt deeply because I thought, Lord, I, I went and did what you would have me to do. I went and prayed, and Lord, the lady died. And, and all for the next three weeks, it was in my ear. The devil was in my ear. You prayed, and she died. I thought you had the gift of healing. But that lady prayed, you prayed for that lady, and she died. Died. This is what I can hear in my ear. And you know, and, and I, I became kind of a 
you know, reluctant to pray for anybody else. You know, I, I mean, God, I became reluctant. You know, for those three weeks, I wouldn't pray for anybody. Because they should love to pray. pray but, but I became reluctant. And one day when I was studying, when I got studying until you know, during the three weeks, or the end of the three weeks, the Holy Spirit spoke unto me plain, just as plain as I do, plain as I'm talking to you. He said that the results are not on you. And he went on to say, you are going to pray for some more people. And they are not going to make it. They are going to come home to be with me. And you know, and, and, and it took a weight off of my shoulder. Because I was thinking that it was all on me. But it's not all on me. My responsibility is to pray and the results on the Lord. Amen. The Bible says you shall pray the prayer of faith and the Lord shall raise them up. See, but I didn't know that at the time. You see how you have to grow? I was carrying a weight on my shoulder that God never meant for me to carry. He just simply meant for me to pray for the sick. And the Bible says, they shall recover. Everybody's not going to recover. Everybody's not going to receive a miracle. Everybody that you invite to church ain't going to get saved. Can I talk to somebody? Everybody that hear a message regarding salvation are not going to get saved. Everybody that's praying for not going to get healed. But nevertheless, the promise of salvation is true. Amen. The promise of healing is true. Amen. But the fact of the matter is, you have to, we have to, initiate it. Amen. If we don't initiate it, God knows you ain't going to get saved. Amen. And God knows you ain't going to get healed. Okay. Are you listening to me? Now, the problem that I see with the church and praying for the sick is most churches simply don't do it anymore. That's true. Because it will interrupt the Sunday morning church service and will have the audacity to say, Pam, God don't heal anymore. Do you really believe God don't still heal anymore? See, the fact of the matter is, the problem is, nobody can heal because nobody's praying. Amen. Wait a minute. When the last time have you went to a church? I'm, I'm talking about like you know, other than here. When the last time have you went to a church and they stopped serving and praying for somebody? Let me get with I want you to think about it just for a minute. I want you to think. I want you to think about it for a minute. Well, yeah, we we we, we uh, invite people to get saved, and that's what it's all about: inviting people to get saved. But God wants us to. Pray for the sick. We don't have time. We, we don't have time for that on Sunday morning. That, that, will, that will cause too many problems. You know that somebody might get up there and fall out on the floor and want to speak in tongues or what have you. You know, like, you love stand out on the floor. That's right. You know, just walk around and, and continue to preach and continue Amen. to pray. Amen. But if, 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 if you're not going to pray for anybody to be healed, you stop talking about God don't heal anymore. Amen. You ain't seeing nobody getting healed because you ain't praying for nobody. Wow. Right. Amen. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, true, Won't take the time. Won't take the time. I remember, you know, just a, a, a few weeks ago when uh, Paulette, I didn't even touch Paulette. I just said, simply said, your doctor's going to say, we can't find nothing in your eye. <laughs> didn't, what, what did he say to you? <laughs> didn't he not say the same thing that I said? What I'm saying is, let, let me make it clear on YouTube. I prayed for this lady in the church. She was having a problem in her eye. And uh, I prayed for her, didn't even touch her. I just simply said, when you go to the doctor tomorrow, he's going to simply tell you that I can't find any problem in your eye. So you don't have a problem. That is what happened. Exactly. It happened because somebody prayed. And what will happen is, the young lady that I prayed for, she can be in conversation with somebody, and they be talking about like the problem that they're having, and she can say, well, let, let me pray for you. My pastor prayed for me, so let me pray for you. It don't have to do, have anything to do with how fast you can say it. Yes. You don't have to be talking about 
Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, Lord of lords. All power is in your hands. And I thank you that you have extended your power to me so that it will flow through my extremities and touch the body so that a, you don't have to get into all of that. You don't have to do all of that. You just simply pray and say, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray that this infirmity, this disease, or something will happen, Father, in this body, and this person can give thanks unto your name because I believe that a healing process is taking place. Yes. Did you not know that the Lord gave you your mind and your mouth? Amen. So you can't impress him with your vocabulary? <laughs> so stop trying to impress God Amen. with how well Amen. you can talk and what have you. Just get it out. That's how that's why the game is speaking in tongues. So there's some people can't get it out, so they say it in tongues. That's right. Are you? Amen. 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 Come on, guys. Am I helping anybody? Yes, so they have the audacity to say, nobody in our church that will get healed. Now, I, I'm not going to tell you what background I came up in. You can guess all you want to, but I'm not going to say it. Very seldom did I see those ministry, those churches praying for anybody to say. Now, you know, you, they, they had what they call a list. They called it the, the, the sick and the shut in. Mm -hmm. How long are they going to stay shut in? Uh -huh. Amen. Every Sunday, they would read this list, and the same folk with on the sick and the shut in list. Sick and the shut in list. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Have y'all ever heard that before? Yeah. They'll get up, you know, like when we read announcements and all of that, they'll read that list and some of the same people say, you know, like, have y'all seen the back of what they pray for? I have them show a little faith and come to church that we might pray for them. See, but no, that would get that would get in the way of, you know, A and B selection. That would get in the way of the, get in the way of altar call. That would get in the way of all of our design program. You follow me? Well, how are we gonna fit this in the program? Yeah. Move the program out of the way and fit the Lord in. Come on. I don't I have been there. Come on. Amen. I've seen these things happen. Right, right. The Lord is the problem. See it happen. And, and you know what? I remember this, my, my one particular church. I was going to hold a healing service. I was going to hold a healing meeting, if you will, in this particular church. My church, church where I went, people knew my character. They knew what I believed in. I went to church every Sunday, taught Sunday school, with Sunday school superintendent at one time. I mean, I was there. So I wanted to hold a healing service. Did you not know that I was called into question about, you know, with the head deacon of the church? I ain't called nobody names, so y'all can guess all you want to. Right. I was called into question by the head deacon of the church, and they had a meeting and said, now what you gonna do? What you, what you gonna do? I mean, like, you know, like, we haven't done this point. Now what you gonna do? I just simply told them I'm gonna do what the Bible says to do. I'm gonna simply pray for the sick. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna simply pray for the sick. I said, that's all I wanna do. And that's in the Bible, isn't it? Amen. So they thought, yeah, let's yeah, sit in the Bible. So, <laughs> the night that they, they, they finally gave me the okay, and uh, the night that I had the service, they were sitting on the front row. <laughs> Both of these men are deceased now. Oh, they were sitting on the front row watching everything that I was doing. Mm. And man, I got all kind of calls the next day. There's one call in particular, this one woman, she had a bad back here. Bad back here. And she called me the next morning, you know, 9 o'clock in the morning. I mean, like, hardly loud. Talking about she don't wash five loaves of coal today. She was saying that, uh, <laughs> I haven't been able to do this in a long time. What you got in your hand? I said, well, it's just right. a little bit annoying. Right. There was this one particular lady at the same church. So we, we, that, that, that went over, okay, I was, allowed to, I was allowed to hold some more meetings after the word got around and people got touched. Mm -hmm. And 
I was called one evening after I got off from work. That was this young, young girl, man. This girl, I don't think she was even 18, maybe 19 years old. I mean, her, her fist was closed. She, I mean, I couldn't even open her hands up. I mean, seriously, couldn't even open her hands up. And I was called, and the mother was crying. And uh, the mother of the church that I was going to, uh, they, the, the, the girl's mother, and uh, the mother of the church were friends. So the mother of our church, the mother in the church called me, and she told me the situation, that I think, would I come and pray? I said, sure, when I get off work, I, I go. So I got off work, and I got my oil, I took my oil. And when I went into the house, I saw the situation, and uh, I pulled oil on both of the hands after I ministered. I ministered for about 20 minutes. And then I got the young lady to say that I believe that the Lord will heal me. I asked her, did she believe that when I prayed for her that she was going to get healed? And she said that I believe it. So I poured oil on the fingers. And uh, I said, now, try to open them now. Try to open them. Those hands just came open just like that. They were giving testimony to church. You gave testimony to the church. Testimony. You know, I told you about the kid that got the crazy glue in his eye. Mm -hmm. How they brought him to church, had crazy glue. Now the doctor had said that, you know, they, don't, they didn't know whether or not they were going to be able to get the crazy glue out of the child. thought he was going to lose their eye. Mm -hmm. So I remember we, 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 we held service up. I prayed for the child right before we right before, were in the middle of service. Next day, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I received a call and said that, when they took the bandage off the child's eye, the crazy loop, they know where to be fine. <laughs> These things happen Amen. because somebody dared to pray. Amen. When you stand openly and declare that you believe that God will heal, yes. folk will contact you. Yes. See, and I don't have, I don't have the care of and, and concern about it's all on me. My responsibility is just to simply. Pray. I was called over to this one lady's house. Amen. Amen. She was she was afraid. She went to that same church. She was afraid because of uh, that was uh, the artery that was clogged up or what have you. And uh, they were going to do surgery. And this was on a Friday evening. There was snow on the ground, I remember. And you know, I get in my car, just having a front wheel drive, so I maneuvered my way and got over there. And we sat around talking about 35, 40 minutes or what have you. I said, now can I pray? She said, well, go ahead and pray for me, Pastor Reese. That's why I called you. So I prayed for her. She went to the doctor Monday to have surgery. Didn't have to do surgery because <laughs> right. the Lord had performed right. a miracle. Amen. Right. So please, Good. please, yeah. yes. don't tell me you not told you about the child that had the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the lead and, 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 and had gotten into her blood. Six years old, they said that the child would never develop above 12 years old. So I held the child in on, praying about that situation. That was on a, that was on a, on a weekend. Then next Wednesday, I received a call. Couldn't find not an ounce of blood in the child's body. Oh, thank it happens because somebody dared to pray. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let me read this. Let's read something. Let's read out of uh, Psalm the. 130 numbers of songs. Yeah. 130 numbers of songs. Okay, in this very interesting couple of verses here, Psalms 103, starting with the first verse. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Who forgiveth all of thy iniquities, who healeth all of thy diseases. Who healeth all of thy diseases. You know, the Lord says, and I forget what chapter it is in the book of uh, Isaiah. He said, come and let us reason together uh, to put me in remembrance of what I have said. So what I'm saying is that you can go to God in prayer and say, Lord, you said this is a promise. Amen. So I'm willing to stand on the promise. Lord, you said for me not to forget all of your benefits. Amen.
For you have forgiven me of all of my iniquities. You have healed me of all of my diseases. In other words, in other words it's past tense. Why would you say it's past tense, Pastor Reese? Why would you say it's past tense? If I say that it's past tense, that means that it's already done, right? Amen. The provisions were made before you were ever born. Amen. The provisions were made when Christ went to the cross. Right, right. Come on. So I got to look back at the cross and see what Christ paid for me to have. So when I forget about it, I don't get it. Notice he used it to benefit. Forget not all of his benefits. You need to tell me, Pastor Reese, that there are benefits. There are benefits. There are things that belong to me as a child of God, of course. And I'm going to take care of the benefits that belong to me as a child of God. Benefits, Paulette. Benefits. Notice. Let me read it again so that you can hear it. I want you to see this now. Who forgiveth all of thy iniquities, who healeth all of thy diseases, who healeth all of thy diseases. So I got to look to the cross. I got to look to the cross and see what belonged to me as a child of God. And he went to the cross to save him. Yes, he did. Thank you. He went to the cross. Did he did not know that when he went to the cross, he, he went to the cross for the whole man? Amen. And when I say whole man, I mean spirit, soul, and body. He paid the price for the whole man. So what I forget about the benefits, you know, let, let's look at this for a minute. For I forget about the benefits, that mean that uh, there are some things that belong to me I won't get. If you forget that you go to a place and the place says, okay, like this, this, this game is going to start at 6 o'clock. If you get, forget that the game starts at 6 o'clock and you don't get that to 8, 8, 30, you're going to miss the game. Right? right. You forgot what time to start. So you didn't enjoy the game. So when you forget the benefits, you don't enjoy it. Oh. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the fact of the matter is, you, you first thing a person said, well, I tried once, I didn't get any results. I tried it twice, I didn't get any results. How long did it take you to get saved from your nonsense? Yeah. Yeah. How many people did you crash out when they came to you trying to get you saved? How many? How many people did you say were food is talking about this salvation stuff? How many? And you finally, finally got saved. You mean to tell me you would give up on God's word just because it didn't materialize after one prayer? Oh, it'll be wonderful, Demetra. I mean, it'll be wonderful if I can just pray for you and everything is fine. Now, that'll be wonderful. But well, sometimes it doesn't happen. That way. So we got to give God time. Amen. Did you get that? Yes. Let's turn to Isaiah the 53rd chapter. Isaiah, Isaiah 53, yes. verses 4 and 5. And this is one verse that I quote just about every day. Isaiah 53, verses 4 and 5. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our song. Yet we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded by the transgressions, he was bruised by our iniquities, and chastisement of our peace and upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. You see that again? You still have to get here and look back at the cross. When Jesus went to the cross, every foul thing, every nasty thing, every sickness, every sin, every disease, was all nailed to the cross for Jesus. Notice now, and I quote, but he has become sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He became sin for you. In other words, he took it away from you. It was nailed to the cross, but we got to stand out of the ground so that it will materialize in our body. It's been paid for. It's been paid for. See, why would you have a car at home in, in the garage 
that's paid for and still catching the bus. I'll be taking advantage of that paid for car in the garage. You mean to tell me it is, it's winter time, it's snowing, slush and sleet and all of that, and you out there on the corner catching the bus, and you got an a SUV in the yard, and, and, and a garage that can get you to work, won't get stuck? You're not taking advantage of what you have. Jesus paid for it so that you can have it. The church are not seeing results because the church won't step out and do that. What if I pray and the person don't get healed? But what if you pray and the person does get healed? Amen. Don't, please Amen. don't tell me that that's not the behavior. You know, I don't want to lose my, my reputation for all that prayer for. Suppose they don't get healed. Suppose. I've been, I've, I've been around this thing probably for a long time. Been in the ministry over 36 years. Been praying for folk a long time. Many churches that I've gone to. There are some churches in this city that we don't pray for the sick. We used to go to a, I'm not going to call any church a name, but some ministers in this city. You know, we like, we like, you know, we would, would invite pastors that were sitting on the platform to pray for the sick. I mean, like the, 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 the line, folk get prayed for, folk call out, folk people get healed. That was because we were exercising the gift. Amen. But when you don't exercise the gift, when you don't pray for the sick, nobody is going to get healed. Now, why am I praying? Why am I teaching on this today? And we got, you know, the very few people here. I'm saying this to you because you're going to get the opportunity next week. You're going to get the opportunity next week. I prophesy and I declare that decree that you're going to get the opportunity next week to pray for somebody. Amen. And can I tell you? And when it went and, and it's going to happen so quick, you are not going to get it back out. So you know what? Can I pray for you? We might look at you kind of strange because you seem like the person that would even think, <laughs> even think about doing something like that. They'll look at you and say, yeah, you can pray for me. But one good thing to do before praying, just say that when I pray for you, keep your mouth shut, don't say anything. <laughs> because you may say the wrong thing. That's right. You pray for them, and then they'll come to you and say, well, you know what you pray for me? And he really, he really, whatever was wrong with him started feeling down. That's because of the goodness of God. Let me read you one more verse with the folks. Am I having anybody today? Have I, have I been a blessing to you? I want to show you something. This was in Acts, the yes. fifth chapter. This was right after Jesus left and went back to the Father. I don't know how many years that uh, transpired, but Jesus, that's what we call the Acts of the Apostles. In Acts, the fifth chapter, let's go to the 14th verse. Write this down and look at it again. Read the whole chapter of Acts, the fifth chapter. So Acts 5, start with the 14th verse. And believers were more added to the Lord multitudes, both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folk and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them into common prison. Because of what they were doing, they were put in prison, but also because of what they were doing, Many people were coming to the Lord. God can use healing as a witness to get people saved. Amen. In this particular case, many people were coming to the Lord. And in that in same case, there were people that got jealous and put them in prison. Why? Because they were going through the neighborhood, if I can say this, getting people that were sick, bringing them and setting them in front of the apostles that even 
that if Peter's shallow might pass by some of them, they would get healed. But they, 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 the people had faith. The people had faith. See, the, some of the local churches killing people of faith. You know, I, I remember years ago, I had called about four men. I wanted to get together with them and hold a healing crusade in the city. If I call the name, you tell me I'll recognize it. About four million. And did you not know that I could not get neither one to join with me? And that was a, another preacher that heard what I was trying to do. But I didn't call him because I really didn't know him. He told one of them, he said, we need to get behind this brother. He said, we need to get behind him and do something like this in this city. But the four million that I called, I could not get one. I could not get one. But now, here these men are praying and people in the community getting people to bring them in their bed, sending them for the apostles, and Peter just walking by them, so I'm getting here. That was God will honor in the faithfulness of the apostles plus the people that would bring them to get here. So, the problem that I'm having with the church and praying for the sick years, the church won't take the time to do this. So number one, we will interrupt church service, but yet we have the audacity to say that God ain't healing anymore. No, he's not healing anymore for you or for the people that you're associated with because you ain't praying for anything. You don't pray, you don't get the results. Now give the Lord a hand, so like, is that okay? 